Right, in this video I'm going to show you how to use CHIMP 261812. Now the reason I'm making this video is because in the newer version that I modified, that I updated of the CHIMP to the 261812 variant, I changed the user interface so it now looks different, it now functions differently and I thought I'd do an updated kind of tutorial on how to use it. It maybe explain a few things just in case you find it and you're not entirely sure what to do. So obviously the first thing you're going to need is an Xbox. You're also going to need a hard drive. Um, in this case this is a SATA 2.5 inch. It's a 320 gigabyte hard drive. Since it's SATA I'm going to need and SATA to IDE adapter. I've got two here, I'll explain that in a second. You're going to need an 80 wire IDE cable if you're using a SATA adapter. Some adapters will work with the 40 wire which is the one that comes with the Xbox but they're more problematic with these. Some work, 99% of them don't. You have problems with them so if you've got an IDE hard drive, you can use this one. If you're using a SATA drive, which most people nowadays will be, it can go away because you need one of these. These are they're cheap. In fact, you know, as I say, they're the cheapest chips, but they're actually a hell of a lot cheaper than chips. To be perfectly honest, one of these cheapers is cheaper than a Snickers bar. Yeah, a cable is cheaper than a Sweetie. Um, obviously another thing you're going to need is a splitter cable of some kind or an external power brick to power the hard drive. Um, the Xbox power supply can power two ID hard drives perfectly fine but if you have problems then you will need to find an external power source. So either another Xbox, um, if you use another Xbox make sure you plug in the AV cable because if you don't, the Xbox will turn off after a couple of minutes. So, in this case, I'm not using a Y splitter. This is just a Molex extension um, from an old PC. This cable, you may be thinking, what the hell is that? That's used for powering the SATA adapter. This SATA adapter is one of the best ones. This is just a cheap £3 SATA adapter from China. Well, I got it for the UK, but it's from China. Um, the reason I bought these ones specifically is because these both stated that they support LBA48, which is hard drives over 500 gigabytes. And to be perfectly honest, I've not had any issues with this or this one. Uh, also, your SATA adapters must have jumpers, which are these things. Um, essentially, little pins which allow you to select from master, cable select or slave. Um, you can just set it to cable select and the Xbox will do the master slave swapping for you. Uh, in this tutorial I'm going to use this one. So we can get rid of these. Uh, I've already got an 80 wire ad uh, IDE cable inserted or PATA cable depending. It's the same damn thing. Well, cable wise anyway. So, focus. God. Uh, so, I'm going to be using this one, so let's connect it. So, if I can uh, plug in your bugger. Right. So, this now plugs in. I should be able to try it out. Um, you can do this one handed but what I'll do is I will sit you like so. There you go. So everybody knows how to plug this thing in because it only goes in one way. So that's that part done. The next part is to take this cable out. 
your Molex cable which powers your hard drive. Plug in your Y splitter or in my case the Molex extender breakout to all different Molexes. Plug that in. Plug this one in to the hard drive. So that's it plugged in. That's that part done. Take this hard drive, stick it there. If your hard drive has resistors and bare, as you can see, this is all all the surface mount is on the other side. Um, so this is just vias on this side, um, and the screw peg or the screw holes are above this. So you can set that on there and it won't short. But you can start a bit of cardboard or a bit of cloth, an old rag, you know, a duster, stuff like that. Uh, take this cable, yeah, try and plug it in one handed. There we go, tidy the wires up, just shove them there. Now, the easiest way I find to take this cable out and plug it in when needed is to lift the drive up. Obviously, to do that, you need to undo some screws and pull this up. Pull it forward so that it sits at an angle. As you see, I can get my hand in here. Yeah. Pull it out and plug it in. Now, when you do this, you have a window of about four seconds to do it. So you have to be quick. Um, uh, but it's quite easy to do. So now that that's all set up, I'm now going to get my sophisticated stand, which is two boxes, so that I can set the phone on it. So turn the Xbox on. Oh, but I now take my sophisticated stand. if I can, which I can't because it's nice and bloody low. <sighs> when doing these videos you need tripods and all fancy equipment. You know, I don't have any of that. There we go, that'll do. So, um, obviously in the description there will be the download link to CHIMP 261812 uh, you would transfer that to the Xbox at this point or before you get started um, so once it's transferred the folder uh, the zip file is self explanatory inside the zip file there is a folder called CHIMP 2618 oh excuse me CHIMP 261812 inside that folder there's two folders and a text file uh, there's a change log um, just basically stuff that I've changed uh, I've actually changed more but I just uh, nobody's ever got to read it so there's no point uh, the source folder just includes the files that I've updated and changed and the folder you want is the ePartition folder now everything inside that folder goes in the root of your ePartition so Linux boot, CFG and the applications folder go in your ePartition. Can't get any easier. So once you do that, you restart the Xbox or you can press start and pick refresh list if you're using Chimp. Eh, sorry, Unleash X. If you're using HBMC, I'll just update. Uh, Evox dashboard, I think you need to restart as well. But at this point we now swap over the IDE cable now that's kind of self explanatory we swap the cable before we launch CHIMP and the reason we do that is because there's a higher success rate than trying to do it when you are in the, Gen the Gentux loader or Gentux or in this case XBlast OS so what you do is get the cable out and plug it in that's it done. That took me like two seconds. Uh, 
and we press the A button. So as you see, this is the X-Blast OS. It's a modified version of the Gentux loader. Um, IDOTS fan modified it to work uh, to load Chimp uh, because this version supports all Xboxes and it's the best version, it's the most up to date version. So you press A, you'll get two OKs and then it'll tell you it's starting Chimp 26 18 12. Um, I don't have an Ethernet cable inserted, so the starting network will hang here for about 5-10 seconds. I'll then tell you it's failed, and then you will proceed to press Enter to activate the console. Enter is the A button. So as you can see, this screen is different. Um, it's simplified and it's easier to understand. Um, First thing you want to do is you want to scan physical ID devices. So you press A on option one, and you will get this menu, which now tells you the basically the model numbers and the serial numbers of your drives. We are looking for the slave drive, and as you can see, it's detected, and the status is unlocked. So from this, we now pick option two, clone from master to slave. We have two options like normal. We have full disk byte by byte. The only time you would use that option is if both drives are the same size. Um, if your drive is larger than your master drive, so if your, your new drive is a larger drive, you would use selectives. Basically use selective all the time, um, unless your drives are the exact same size, simple. So option two is already selected. Now, what partitions, partitions, what partitions would you like to clone? Now, I'm going to use C and D. Uh, this is just a stock Xbox hard drive, so I'm using option one. If you have a larger drive or you have stuff on the F partition, you can select the C, E and F. Or if your hard drive is larger and you want to keep the stuff on your F partition, I suggest selecting C, E, C, E, F and G takes remaining space. What this does is this will clone your C, E and F partition and then the remaining space on the hard drive will become your G partition. But I want to use C and D. Also another thing that's updated, um, IDOTS fan, I asked them to change the selection button for these to the X button on the controller. Normally it's the left stick and right stick if you click them in, if you push them in, it will select. I think that's a bit clumbersome and I don't see why they didn't just use the X button. So you use the X button to select uh, what option you want and then you use the A button to proceed forward. So as you can see, if you select the C and D partition, you now get an option to partition the rest of the hard drive. So in this instance I want to select 2 because it's only a 320 gig hard drive. So I'll have 297 gigabytes free and I just want that on the F partition. So I select F occupies all available space. Select OK and then I select Yes to confirm the format. If you select No, it will take you back to the main menu. If you select Yes, it will proceed to format the drive. So tilt that up. As you can see, this is what it looks like now when it's cloning the partitions. It now tells you the cloning status and it tells you that it's cloning the C partition. And as you can see the speed is around about 12 megabytes. This will vary depending on the size of the partition. Uh, the reason it varies is due to the way the byte size is. It's dynamically selected now based on the size of the partition. So it's to give you the fastest possible cloning speed, if possible. So it took 37 seconds to clone the C partition. Um, the E partition takes about 6 minutes all in to clone. As you can see that's about 13 to 14 megabytes that will go to. 
um, I'd just like to point out if the speed is 2 megabytes and less restart the procedure so turn the Xbox off reconnect the slave drive go through the procedure again you should be getting at least 5 plus megabytes when cloning minimum if it's lower than 5 megabytes restart so I'll pause this and come back when it's 98% Right, so process is at 93%. Um, so while we're nearly done, um, I'm just going to say when the process is finished cloning, you will be asked if you would like to lock the hard drive to the motherboard. Uh, for 99% of users, that's what you would want. Obviously, if you're upgrading the hard drive, you want to lock it to the, the specific motherboard that you're or the Xbox that you're using to clone. So, as you can see, it now says cloning complete lock slave HD. Uh, you can do so, you select yes. I'll then tell you if the lock is successful or not. If it's not, it will tell you. Um, as you've seen there, it said it was successful, so that's now locked. If you want to double check, select option one, and as you can see, it's locked. You can now either power the Xbox off via the button on the, the button on the front or navigate to other options, shut down, yes. And that's it. So that's your hard drive cloned. And if you want a laugh, that was my wee stand for sitting the phone on. Um that's the process done, so now what we do is take the ID cable out of this drive, try and take it out of this drive, um, if I can, oh no, I just disconnected that, so yeah, um, I'm just going to set you down, so blackness. Disconnected, plug this back into the DVD drive, if I can, done, uh, set the DVD drive back in, reconnect this because I pulled it out by accident, so that's now connected, take this cable, plug it in and since this is set to cable select this will now become the master because the Xbox always the masters always the last drive on the IDE cable when cable select is enabled and also this is always slave so turn the Xbox on Hopefully this damn thing focuses. And that's you. So that's Chimp 261812 from start to finish. That's the new hard drive. Um, I'd just like to point out that Chimp 261811 and 12 variants both format the partition cluster sizes correctly. The use the method that Xbox Partitioner uses to format the partitions. So this hard drive now has a partition table which Xbox Partitioner can read and soft mods and newer BIOS like X25, was it the 53, or was it 5035, whatever, and, and BIOS. 5003 and 4 variant can read uh, also the X3 BIOS and stuff like that can read the partition tables but as you can see the F partition has all the space the E partition is cloned properly the C partition is cloned properly this is the Shadow C partition this Xbox is soft modded and that's it 
So that's how you use Chimp 261812 and that's how simple it is to clone your hard drive to a larger hard drive. So thanks for watching and if you use it hopefully you find it useful and hopefully this video was informative. So bye bye.